they built this house, they built the wall beside me wrong, and it settled over an inch. So today, we are gonna be fixing this wall, we're gonna be fixing the floor, we're gonna be making it better than it's ever been. Nearly 100 years after my great-great-grandfather bought this mansion for $7,000, I am fully remodeling and restoring it. We started this do-it-ourselves adventure with a full demolition cleanup and closed cell spray foam insulation of the attic, upstairs, main floor, and basement. We even tore out both the old chimneys. We then got to work constructing. The kitchen, the dining room, and the living room all got brand new floors. The kitchen got a new wall, and we tore out the old staircase. So this brings us to today. With the help of Austin, Justin, and Roman, we are going to be working in the old den and we're also going to be working in the area where the old staircase used to be because this floor i don't know how well we can pick it up on camera but we have a massive high spot right here from that wall to this line on the floor it goes up an inch then from that line on the floor to this wall it goes down an inch and then from this wall over to roman it goes up another inch so we're going to be pulling up all the old subfloor we're going to be replacing all the floor tiles underneath of it and if we have a really good day today we will have sheeting down just like this you know we should probably do something with that right there justin it looks a little rotten it looks a little rotten the Just stairs look a little loosey-goosey. After we put drywall, no one will see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of hard to drywall put anything screws in that. They make six-inch screws. <laughs> It'll be poking out the outside. And paint, just yeah. cut it flush. Heck yeah. So it's not sticking out through siding. Well, if that's what you want, we can do that. We're gonna have a little bit of a hard time keeping up ahead of Roman here because he's producing a massive amount of trash and we had the dump truck completely full. So I'm gonna go dump this quick. Oh, come on, Bessie, you did not get that cold last night and it looks like we are on empty on the field gauge. So hopefully we do not run out. Started, that's a good sign. Ah, <laughs> oh, we had a piece fall out. I might wanna pick that up. Okay, dump truck's empty now. I was gone for 20 minutes, and Roman already got all of this cleared out. Gotta say, the man is fast. And you haven't got this done yet? No. of interesting challenges about putting down this OSB subfloor is we have to put it down in synchronization. We can't just take a random spot somewhere in the floor and then just put a sheet. So we actually have to start over here, which is the top of the entryway, because we have to put a sheet down, then put a sheet down, put a sheet down, and then we can kind of stagger them like they are in the floor, but you can't just pick an absolute random spot to put them in. So with that being said, we have some rotten boards over there that Justin's gonna have to cut out and replace. Then we're gonna be replacing the floor joists all the way from here over. So we have like, I believe there's 18 floor joists at least to that wall. And then whatever is from that wall to the wall on the other side of Roman. So we have our work cut out for us today. And as they say, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Justin, go! What are you doing? Cutting these off to where they're centered on the beam. So another beam can come yep. right to it. Yep. Oh! What? What? Why are you cutting it? Why? To get it out of the way for these two here so we can put new ones next to it easier. Oh, just, okay. Do you want a big T? I might need it. This is an amazing bar. I, I don't know how we would do all these jobs without it. Wow. Wow.
225? Yeah. Just got me. Yeah, yeah, 235. Okay, let's see it, Roman, since you're such a big dog here. Oh, I'm not. I wanted to see here. what you can do. Oh, here. I'm going to film you. I have a headache today. Put with excuses. Let's go. I have doctor's excuse. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> 260. Currently, we're witnessing something that, would, that we deal a lot here around, it, and it's waiting for Justin to finally start the project. Why is it waiting for me? He's been doing this ever since we started today. And this is the part where we need to start laying our flooring. Do you need help, Justin? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's help Justin. But some time ago, somebody presumably in my family took some ring shank nails and they stuck them in just this one floor joist to hold the subfloor down. So it must have been squeaking or something. Yeah. There's about 20 ring shanks in a row. A ring shank is about impossible to pull out. So I'm going to try these pinchers. And if these don't work to pull this out, I'm just going to have to nail all of these down in. Because. I don't know what else to do. Holy cow. This is what we call a ring shank nail. It's got all these little baby ribs on it. So when you drive it down into a piece of wood, all those ridges act as an extra friction point and it makes it really hard to pull these out. This would be a standard nail being how it's nice and smooth, and then this would be a ring shank. You can see all the little ribs, so that's the difference. Ow, you dirty dog. Oh, broke the head off that one. Okay, good news. We got all the ring shanks out of that floor joist. Justin and Roman are still working over here on top of the entryway stairs. They're getting everything sistered up here so that way they can get a new sheet of plywood in. So while they're doing a two guy job over there, I'm going to be working on top of this beam right here where all these floor joists come and butt together. We need to pull every single one of these nails that tie these floor joists down to that beam. That beam that's underneath the floor over time since Things were not really loaded properly, per se, back when they built the house. That beam has actually started to get a bit of a warp to it. So it's saggy in the middle. That's why the center of the floor is lower than the edges of the floor. Hence why we're replacing all the floor joists. So that way we can get a level floor again. So in order for us to get a new floor joist put beside the old one, just like this, we need to get that warp out of the floor. And in order for us to do that, we need to take those nails off. So that way the floor joists are completely separate from that beam. This tool is a nail puller or a cat's claw, sheep's foot. I don't, People call it different things, whatever you want to interpret that thing as. It's really a pretty simple tool. We're just gonna hit it in with the hammer like so. And then we're just gonna drop it on the floor like that. You want that back? Yeah, please. Just like that, we have one down, like 50 to go. Look at this, we're nail free. Now that we got all that done, 
Justin and Roman got the top of the landing done over there. So they've been sistering up new joists in what used to be the old den, which is what is going to be two thirds pantry, one third bathroom. In the back where Roman is will be the bathroom and the front will be the pantry, which is just right off the kitchen, which the kitchen's right over there. So they've got a couple sistered up here already. They're getting them on the same plane to each other. So when we slide our hand across, we should not feel any sort of lip or anything. They should be equal. And then we're just gonna keep working our way over here. Once we get to this wall, we're going to run into a little bit of a problem. We have now got to the floor joist that is underneath the wall that is sunk an inch and Justin and Roman are trying to do some leverage with the big bar and pushing down below to get the new one in. Why are you guys doing that instead of making a temporary wall and jacking it up like we did over there? Well, that, that'll be the next step if we can't get it in like this. The next step would be taking this floor jack and putting it right under the joist. That's what I would do. Is it moving? Yeah. Don't wedge it, Justin. Justin, it's moving the whole plate. The whole plate over there? The pry and smack with the big pry bar and the sledgehammer was not working, so Roman had the idea of taking this floor jack that we found inside the basement. It used to be holding one of the rooms up back there. He's got a cinder block, a two by four, and they're gonna try to put it right underneath the old floor joist. They're gonna try to jack that up, which should jack the wall up, which should then allow enough room for the new floor joist to slide right in. We'll get everything screwed up, take the jack down, then we'll have a perfect floor. Things like that will turn your project into sometimes half hour, hour, or hours of struggle over something you haven't anticipated. Nice! Watch out! Oh, that drill's not brand new anymore. Just watch your step during construction. And by that, I mean when the board lies like this, don't step on this side. What we're trying to do here is take this post out because it's apparently it's too high for our floor system. It raises this floor joists up way too high. So we need to take it out and come up with something that will hold our two beams well, just down slower, slower, lower. Just down a little bit lower. And to replace that post, we'll probably use these floor jacks. We have two of them, probably for each end of the beam. Now 
as we got this beam taken care of, we can start fastening our joists and level, leveling the tops of them out. We didn't absolutely have to address this issue, but it was something that was in the way. It was making the flooring too high. And we want to be as close to our flatness, our one plane level as possible, because that will make the future projects easier. Once we get to the beam replacement project, everything is gonna be as ideal as we can make it, but for now, this is good enough. Once we have the new beams, we're gonna be throwing these away and we'll be installing the straight modern new beams that will keep everything in the same plane. Yes. We are not gonna have any more crooked stuff. Here is a good example what we're dealing here with. You see the laser going about three inches up and being almost an inch or three quarter inch below. We got our beam figured out in the basement now. It's pretty flat and level in the basement well it's not level but it's flat and now we're going along spacing these floor joists 12 inches in between and adjusting the tops of them so they're in one flat plane all the way across We now have the floor joist all shimmed up and leveled to the right height. Everything is set for an inch and a half off of this string line. So when we put our three quarter inch plywood on top and then we put our heated flooring stuff on top of that, our floor level will actually be right here where the string is. So all of these are good to go now. We are ready to lay down some OSB sheeting. We were able to take the floor jack beneath into the basement and push up on this wall to be able to get the new floor joist down below without having to take out this wall or build a temporary wall to do it, but now that we're ready to put the subfloor in, we need to have access to the bottom side of this wall. You can see we still got the old subflooring underneath. That needs to go bye-bye. Break time. Break time. You want one? No, thank you. You want you want one. I want one. <laughs> you just won't have I'm not one. Not gonna have one. So we want to make it where these walls have the new subflooring underneath of them. And in order for us to do that, we need to jack up the ceiling so that way we can make some space here and then slide the new OSB sheets underneath. See how this wall has brand new OSB subflooring running all the way underneath of it, where the walls over here that we have not done yet, these ones have old subflooring underneath of them.
there goes that blade. Smoked. <laughs> Trash. I've been called trash again. You are what you are. Roman, <laughs> in case you didn't realize, the microphone on the camera is this big puffy ball that looks like a rabbit tail full of trash. That's what I was blowing off. Is it microphone or trash? You said I'm cleaning trash. You didn't say I'm cleaning microphone. I said I'm cleaning trash, as in the trash that was on the microphone. So stop insinuating everything I say that refers to trash, garbage, dummy, silly, goofy, is you. <laughs> silly goose. I just found out today that apparently Justin can't put in drywall because it hurts his shoulder, but yet he can swing around this 14 pound hammer all day. It's not 14. Rowan said he loves drywall, so I don't want to get in his way. Right, Roman? Hey, Justin, what, what? Justin, Justin! What? Why are you not he listening? When are you building your new house? I'm not. No? Why, why are you grabbing building materials every night coal leaves? I'm just copying what you're doing. Coming in the house now and we come up the little set of stairs right on top of the landing. We got all of this sheeted into what used to be the old den, which is going to be the pantry on the left side. And then the right third is going to be a bathroom. We have all of this sheeted. Now everything is glued. Everything is screwed. We're at a little bit of a standstill with getting the rest of this area done because this wall, we need to do some header board building up top and then we need to take the jacks that we currently have employed over there right now, holding that wall up. We need to move everything over to here. That way we can jack up these boards that are supported by that wall. So that way the ceiling doesn't fall and then we'll be able to get, slide our new OSB sheets under that and then continue going and then probably end up having to move the jacks over back to here again so we can keep going that way. But we are not going to have enough time today to be able to get that taken care of. So we are jumping back into the parlor room, which is going to be the living room. And we're gonna get rid of the rest of the old subfloor in there. So that way we can get down to the floor joists. We can inspect them. We can see what we need to get for back there. And then all the demo down here when it comes to the floor will be completely done. subfloor free of the old subfloor that the house used to have so we can look right down into the basement we need to sister up some floor joists beside those yet because they are warped out and basically we are going to have a brand new floor in the main floor of the house by the time all this is said and done we have everything sistered up right here so this is all ready to go we fixed the inch of rise and then the inch of dip and then the inch of rise again it's just a matter of getting this wall figured out now. We were able to get everything levered underneath there and actually lift the wall up when we put the floor joists in with the help of a jack down below. But we do need to do some rebuilding on this wall yet, but we have some figuring out we have to do on how we're gonna get everything tied up in up above in order to get it supported. And well, frankly, it's Friday, we are tired. And so we're heading home. This is all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.